Welcome back, everyone, to the FlowTrack Podcast. I'm Kevin. He is Gordon. Our email address is flowtrackpodcast at gmail.com. I actually have a few emails to read. People still are continuing the tiebreaker debate. That didn't end with the holiday. It's still going It's strong. still going? Yeah, yeah. I, and I want to read them. Was there like a was a conversation of topic at, over like Thanksgiving dinner? Like no. There's one uncle who's like all in on Oklahoma State got robbed. And no. Another uncle's like, are you kidding me? And Well, if... By Thanksgiving table, you mean the email inbox, then yeah. yes, although there wasn't any back and forth. I just thought it was interesting, and we haven't read emails in a bit. So I want to read those. Uh, you can subscribe uh, to the channel. Uh, you can like it. You can become a member, all that good stuff. How was your Thanksgiving, Gordon? The people want to know. People want to know. How was your Thanksgiving? They don't answer a question with a question. I asked you 20, first. Uh, Thanksgiving was great. It was long. I felt like Thanksgiving weekends. Was it longer this year? Friday feels like a Saturday. Saturday feels like a Sunday, and then Sunday feels like second Sunday. It's like a weird situation. A lot of sports, too. Everything gets shifted over. Watch lots of sports. I ran a turkey trot. Good job. Good job. First run. Came out of retirement. Okay. I've only ran. I ran. That was my second run of the year. First run was with you in Tulsa when we ran three miles. <laughs> That's the first run of the year? Yeah. That was I a rough one. I gave up running in 2022. That was your New Year's resolution. All of, all of my focus on biking, lifting, and dunking. Here's my stats. Ooh. Start off. I just want to bring a little race Wait, wait, wait. Breakdown. Hold on a second here. You closed in 537? Is that accurate? Or were the miles marked wrong? No. So I didn't run a... F- so, okay. So it's a five-mile course. Yeah, yeah. I've run this But watch before. only recorded 4.6 miles oh. because 0. 0.4 of it, I was paused on the watch because I was running with a group of people. You know, they had to stop for a bathroom break. Yeah. It wasn't a serious event. We were untimed. So my official time was nine minute mile pace, but it was hundred percent humidity. <laughs> That's good. That's an Austin classic. There, it's hilly. It was hilly. My yeah. heart rate was one hundred eighty three beats per minute. That's I was moving. Yeah, I told you. I, course is tough. Course was tough at the beginning, but you all ran together. Yeah, we ran together, and you wore matching clothes. Yes, interesting. Uh, okay, Maggie, who's she's actually really good. She could probably break three in the in the marathon. Mm-hmm. Uh, she made us turkey costumes. Okay. We got a lot. People were like, "Nice shirt, nice shirt." Like it was fun. We walk around, and everyone's like, waving hi to you. Mm-hmm. Like, it'd be cool. You know who I saw though? Who? Our boss. Oh. The CEO of our company, the owner of our company, Mark Flo. He was there wearing his Flo shirt. Uh, he he though he said, "Why aren't you running uh, with with the time?" Because he wanted to make sure that he can prove that he ran the race. It, and oh, you bought the untimed I one. bought the untimed bit. You saved the five bucks. I saved the five bucks because I All just right. used my watch. Right on. You know, nine minute mile pace. Yeah, okay. How I, your I, I see what you mean now. Now it doesn't really make sense why you would go all out if you're doing the, I won the untimed section. Yeah, there was no winning yet. Uh, it was good. It was good. Went to Houston for the second time in my life. Way too much Astros stuff there. I'll just say Ooh. it. Wasn't ready for it. Everywhere we went, just happened to be driving by the stadium. It pennants and things everywhere went to a christmas tree lighting santa showed up started talking about the astros while they were killing time it was really frustrating <laughs> they, i just couldn't escape it. i don't know what i expected it's houston, houston. they just won the world series great but city great awesome yeah. love just have one fatal flaw university of houston's great yeah yeah actually two fatal flaws the rockets and the astros yeah texans are so bad it doesn't really doesn't even, matter it doesn't matter at all um, big turkey trot news, though. Yes. We saw one of the most intense turkey trot finishes you'll ever see. People have already seen this. This was from uh, Troy, New York, and the finish. There's been extensive reporting on this as two competitors uh, sprint to the line to try to get that coveted. I don't even know what prize they're racing so for at this point. Third place? Third place. Yeah. If the camera starts when the, the top two come in, gentleman uh, <laughs> gets run into the gate. You don't even see finishes this intense when Olympic medals are on the line. That's what a turkey trot will bring out of people. And this kind of reminded me of that Diamond League final with Paul Chalimo. But he went through, didn't he go through the middle yeah. and do the, the scoop? This, there's a fence involved. There's yeah. more danger here. I was also thinking about that world indoors. Was it was Safan Hassan on that final stretch? Obviously, Chalimo again at the, at the trials. But now there's been extensive reporting. This is uh, David Monty's tweet. So they disqualified the guy who stopped his watch, uh, citing they had to cite a USATF rule. <laughs> I would just cite a turkey trot rule. Turkey trot rule is no turkey trot should be this intense. It says each competitor shall run in a direct line after entering the final straightaway. 
This, I got to admit, when I hit play on the video the first time I saw it, I was wondering how it would end. Way more physical than I even imagined. <laughs> also, the fact that the guy stopped his watch. He's like, first thing I got to do, yeah. stop the watch. Pure, pure runner. Um, DQ the right call here. Again, I don't know what the prize was Is for. It Is it the medal? But like, was there a gift certificate? But the he, cross, he hits them after they cross the line. Like, yeah, but he starts he doesn't to impede him until the, the, the race is over. He starts to obstruct a little earlier, like right there. Yeah, but he doesn't Wait, make no, no, contact hold on, until hold on, he passes. Where's the line, though? They're laying on the line, aren't they? No, the oh. line is... Oh, I see. Yeah, That's just where the, the chip... First, first chip... We learned that at the NCAA yes. championships because they're talking about protests based on where the line was. Yeah, I still think there's a little too much argy-bargy there before the line. I mean, the extracurricular stuff. I think you get the flag, and then you get the 15-yarder after for late hit out of bounds here. The thing I want to figure out here is the clock. The clock reads 91.40. Oh, it must have been running from, maybe they started the fun run time, and then it didn't cycle over. Is that what, because I was like, yeah. that's a lot of effort for a 91 minute. It's a big kick at the end there. <laughs> 91 I, minute 5K? I'm just, or like they're running like a half marathon or something? I don't know. No, this was, again, people laugh and they joke about, I'm going to take the turkey trot seriously. This guy really did it. I mean, this guy put his whole heart into it. I, I read an article that said, the guy who got hit, the guy, not the guy who got DQ'd, but the other guy, had just had some scrapes. That was it. So luckily, no major injury. Because running that metal fence there, and that reporter there who's taking the video, she almost gets hit too. I wish the recording kept going and we could see if there was like a more of an altercation. Uh, it said there wasn't. On the article, I, and the re article that I read, there, like I said, there were, this was one of the most reported on running stories of 2022. I read at least two articles about just this finish. Wait, hold on. One of the most reported running stories of 2022. I read at least two articles. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Two is the I mean, most. Of a specific incident. True. Okay. Yeah, can you boil down? I mean, we're, this is going to be in the running for end of the year awards. Because of some recency bias, because yes. we'll remember it, because end of the year awards yep. are coming up in a month. Kind of like college football playoff. Yeah. Recency bias. But how many finishes are this memorable that you can think of Yeah, this year? No. You think of the Chalimo one, and that's pretty much it. But this was, Chalimo's was nothing compared to this. Yeah. Grant Fisher wasn't getting run into a gate. No. Nobody, got, nobody got DQ'd citing USATF rule 163. Do you think this is going to cause meet officials to be like, all right, white metal fencing when you put some padding on it kind of how they put the padding oh, on, on like the field goal goal post like on the goal post or like at the you know in a gymnasium behind a basketball hoop they put padding up yeah yeah when we start seeing some padding or should it on, go uh, track meets should it go cross country style shrink it even more yeah because it expands it so then they get he gets around the first one but then that Puts him into the other one there. My question is, who got the popsicle stick first? <laughs> like, how did they... If they didn't DQ it, who yeah. actually did it? Yeah. Like, who actually wins this race? We need a side angle. We don't... We like, don't. is it... Like, I can't tell. Can you tell? I think the guy who got hit... Wins it? Barely gets it. Okay. Yeah. Also, so does, something, does something break and fall off on this thing? Yeah. I thought I saw something fly up here. Let's watch this one more time. Yeah. You I see mean, that? Probably like a lens cap or something. Okay. A lens cap. It was a lens cap harm in the making of this video. Yeah. All right. So your turkey shot, not as eventful. No. As well, I mean, one. it was eventful. It took a long time. Yeah. But no <laughs> finishes. Sights. No finishes like this. I've only had one road race finish that was even had any sort of contact involved in it at all. And it was nowhere near this physical. You got in a fight in a road race? Not in a fight. Our elbows hit with about 100 to go. And then he had some words oh. when we got to the finish. And I had some words. We were separated by like two people. Yeah. There was a hold me back. There was a the hold me back. I moment. did get, so I'm sure everybody who runs has this, you kind of feel invincible when you get done running sometimes. Yeah, especially the high. Yeah. yeah, especially if you get, but then you also have a lack of oxygen. So you kind of feel tough, but you can't articulate any coherent thoughts. Yeah. So what happened was we were going around a curve with like, you know, 400 to go. Okay. You know, my elbow clipped his elbow. It wasn't intentional at all. It was just, it's a road mile on a crowded street. Road mile. Yeah, road oh, miles. Speedster. Right Senior in college. Yeah. And then he caught up and obviously had remembered me and then made a point to like full on actually shove me with, you know, probably like a hundred ago. And I was just like, all right, that's kind of weird. Like you took an unintentional thing and then you responded by making an aggressive move. So then we finished, he finished after he shoved me, he finished like one or two spots ahead of me. 
Uh, and I said, what was that when I got to the finish? And he said some expletives that we can't say on a family podcast. <laughs> we'll say it for the, the previous, bonus pod. No, no, he said, I think he said something. Not that I haven't lived this down yet. It's like 20 years ago. I still remember it. Not 20. <laughs> Do you 20, think this guy 15. listens to the podcast? No, no way, no way. Um, he might. I, I think he said something like, "You shove me, I'll shove you," and then a word starts with "a." Asshole. Yeah. Okay. And then, I, and then I was just like, "Wait a minute! You you were supposed to apologize when I said what was that? You were supposed to say whoops." Did you ever come back to that? No, that's what I'm saying. I You've probably had, had one in my head. So little oxygen. Twenty years later, though. What would I what's, what's, what's the what's the best comeback? All I, right, we'll, we'll create it. We're I, right, I think right. I said something like, "It's a." F- I, I, I think I said something like, it's a fun race, man. Or like, it's supposed to be a fun race. It's supposed to be a fun race. Which yeah. was such a weird, like I tried to take the high road and then we just kind of, and then another guy I remember like stepped in between us. There was 0% <laughs> chance I was going to fight this guy. No way I was going to, I don't know him. Maybe he's a big fighter. There was no way I was going to oh, fight this man. guy. Uh, but another guy, I felt good because the guy took me serious enough to stand in between us. There was just no chance that it was going to happen. Oh, yeah. We need to do a web redemption with this moment. We need to call Daniel Tosh and have you guys recreate this finish. <laughs> Listen, I, he beat me fair and square. He also shoved me, and it was a cheap move. Oh, all right. And that's like my last. So it's an asterisk. That was my last like good race, too. And this is that why, this is the origins of you hitting the Astros. He's probably an Astros fan. No, too. no, no. This was, in, this was in Eugene, Oregon. Okay. Yeah, he's probably an Astros fan. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. I don't know. All right, what else we got? Uh, so, yeah, uh, Thanksgiving happened. And then right before Thanksgiving, we were like, all right. We're not doing a podcast on Wednesday. We're going to go see family, friends. We're not going to do one on Black Friday. And, of course, we had news happen Tuesday, right before what would have been a great Wednesday podcast. And now we're talking about it a week later. But Caitlin Tui announced on Instagram that she has signed an NIL deal, a name image likeness deal, with Adidas, which is one of the first NIL deals for a shoe sponsor for running since – the rule was created a year ago. And I also, we yeah. start talking about this, like, oh, Oregon is now just going to have a bunch of Nike athletes, mm-hmm, right? Because mm-hmm, they can mm-hmm. do NIL deals. Yeah. And all these different schools are going to be able to recruit by saying, like, hey, stay in school for four years. Grant Holloway yeah. would have been an Adidas athlete. At, or I guess they're – what is it, Nike school? Are they a Nike school? Nike, yeah. Yeah. Grant Holloway would have been a Nike athlete for three years or whatever. Kaylin Tui is the first one to do this. Mm. And – it gets people thinking, like, what does this mean for one Caitlin? What does it mean for collegiate sports? And what does it mean for future pro contracts out there? Um, I think it's cool, one, and I, it makes sense. What's your first initial thoughts, though, on Caitlin Tui having an NIL deal? Well, I thought back to all the discussion, the speculation that – was surrounding the initial yeah. NIL. Like we fervor. thought Cole Hawker wouldn't go pro because of it. Yeah, he's going to stay in school. What's the point of going pro? Just sign with Nike, and then you get all the benefits yeah. of college while also getting a pro contract. I mean, there's still so much you don't know, and you, there's still so much that you don't you don't know how big this is going to get. Yeah. Right. Um, running is different than other sports because the primary the thing that differentiates uh, an amateur runner from a professional runner track athlete is a sponsorship deal with a shoe company it's not the same as a basketball player or a football player signing a deal with an apparel company or a shoe company but then not being on a professional basketball or football team this is the thing that makes you a professional a professional runner. so it's a little bit different and i know a lot of this was in flux because shoe companies are trying to figure out different states had different laws of how nil applied so this was just a big kind of question mark for a lot of people going forward i still think this sort of thing is going to be reserved for the superstars of the sport i still think people are going to get other nil deals that we've seen right for um from companies that are not shoe companies not mega brands like that or maybe mega brands but just not not shoe companies but i don't know how big it's gonna it's gonna get to this level and the Hawker thing, I know it was early on, but you know, ultimately he still decided to go pro, yeah. right? Now, maybe that was because Nike had, was still trying to figure out the best way to al- allocate resources, and maybe we're going to see that change in the near future. But if you're a fan, if you like NCAA running, I think you'd like this because it means the chances of people staying a little longer are going to go up. How much up? We don't know yet, but at least incrementally it's going to go up. Yeah. 
first thing I thought about this is I always think about like the business side of it. Like, why would Adidas do this? Because Adidas already is going to have their logo on Tui's jersey. They're, Tui's going to be running already running in Adidas spikes mm-hmm. and cross country spikes. Like all the photos that she's going to take, of, and, you know, with her team are going to be yeah. having Adidas yeah. logo everywhere. So. The exposure of Adidas isn't really going that much up by signing an NIL deal with an already Adidas collegiate athlete, right? Yeah, I would guess the benefit, though, is you further the relationship in hopes that when they sign the pro deal later on, they'd be more likely to sign with that same partner. Yeah. In the same way, isn't bowling sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts or something? Yeah. Right? Like the, the idea being like, okay, if he goes pro, right, and it's a big deal. But like People talk about that. It's Oh, it's a relationship building thing like oh it's all about the relationship if Katui it's going to be like hey Adidas thanks for giving me the NIL deal money for the past two years but like Nike's going to like 3x your offer oh I'm yeah leaving. oh I'm not saying it's a guarantee I'm just yeah. saying they probably see it through that perspective right and and they probably like she's going to do appearances and things like that right she can post about it like now, so there's value in it now. I just think these ones are different than the other ones where it's like, you, you've everybody seen those, those like the, uh, the quarterback has this deal with a car dealership, yeah, yeah, right? Or, yeah. or someone has a ginormous uh, social media following on, you know, on TikTok. So then they get a sponsorship deal with something that's not as heavily related and linked into the sport itself. That's what I'm saying with, with track and cross country, it's just different because that's the primary way you go pro is by joining or by, by signing a, a deal with a, with a shoe company. Yeah, I think it's one, it's awesome for, for Caitlin Tui that she's able to make money in college this way oh, yeah, that 100%. so many other greats that were the, the Caitlin Tui equivalent of years past, like the Cheserex and, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, the Jenny Simpsons and all that. Like they didn't get to do what she's doing. So it's awesome that she kind of struck while the iron's hot. hot. Um, here's my question. If Kayla, is this going to be a, a dam breaking of NIL deals in track? And if so, who would be next in line? I'm going to give you some names. <laughs> and you're going to tell me yes well, or no. Okay, but let me answer the first part of your question first, because I think I already did. I don't think it is. I think this is going to be reserved for a very small group of people, like the Cheserex of the world that you mentioned. Okay. I, don't, I don't think it's going to be everybody. I think everybody's going to continue to get the smaller ones, but I wouldn't expect you know, 10, 15 athletes a year to be getting this from shoe companies. Okay. Well, anyone else, do you think someone else will get a shoe deal? Oh, yeah. Somebody else will, but it's going to be, like I said, the super duper stars, the NCAA champions. And there's just not many of those every year. Okay. Williams from Oregon. Oh, Makai Williams? Well, we haven't seen it from Nike. Do you think so I don't, know. I, don't, I don't know if that's in Nike's business plan to do that sort Matthew of stuff. Matthew Bowling. Is that's Nike as well too, right, Georgia? You think he'll, he'll I think some? what doesn't make sense. I, I think what doesn't make sense is another a shoe company from a, a competing brand sponsoring you when you're still in college. To me, that would be tough to imagine. I know it's possible, but if you're an Adidas school or a Nike school and having someone else sponsor you, it seems tough. Nico, you think Nico will get an Adidas? Well, I mean, he would probably be my first potential one because. The Adidas tie-in's already there, and we know that they're willing to do this sort of, this sort of program. But yeah, I think you'd have to win, though, first, right? Okay, what about someone like Favor or Philly or Julian Alfred? So not Americans, but they're going to be the two best female sprinters. Yeah, this in twenty twenty three. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I honestly, I I have no clue whether or not the the, the shoe companies are going to invest. That's why are, are they going to invest in an international? My, my question: Are they going to invest in international, like D one type sprinters? That's my question. I don't think. I think the question. No, I think here's what the question is: The question is, would they sign them anyway, right? NIL deal or not? Like, would they if they came out and turned pro, wanted in in, in the traditional way, would they have gotten a contract anyway from one of these companies? And if the answer is you got to clear that bar first. And if the answer is yes, they would have gotten a contract. Then I think that pool narrows itself down a little bit to, okay, well then are you interested in giving them like a little bit of a bonus deal now, right? Not only are you sponsoring them when, when they graduate, but when they're a junior, when they're a senior, when they're a, a sophomore. So yeah, I could totally see a, 
I, I don't think international, like we obviously seen a ton of superstars in the NCAA from all over the world. I think if they're going to be a multiple time NCAA champion, right? I think they would get, I think they would get one too. Will Kalen Tui be wearing an NC State jersey in October of 2020? Yeah, I mean, wouldn't this, wouldn't this, wouldn't this make you think that she'd be more likely to stick around than I less? I think it means she's less likely to stick around. Oh, you think? Yeah. I read it Once the, other the way. money starts coming in, you want more. I and mean, yeah, I read it the other way. I don't know. And the thing is with this, it's the same thing with the... She'll be like, I'm making this now. Mm-hmm. I could be making so much more. Like, it's she's not making the same amount that she would be making if she was pro. I think that is a correct assumption. But I think past that, we don't really know because we don't even know the pro contracts. Yeah. We're never... <laughs> sure. Like, we know some NAL deals, right? What did Bryce Young, the Alabama quarterback... Make for his. I mean, it's yeah, I don't know. a lot of money, a lot. and you it's always see, you always hear the like, oh, four hundred thousand or one million dollars, whatever. But I don't think we'll know that on in track and field and cross country just because we never seem to know. Okay, here's Bryce Young's. What was it called? We got it. Oh, eight hundred thousand. Oh, that's his. It's valued at three point two million. ESPN saying he has eight hundred thousand in NIL deals. So maybe we will find out about individual athletes in track. I just. Because the numbers aren't as big, they're not going to publicize them, and then we don't know about them when they turn pro either. So, yeah, like we we don't know what sort of numbers are being uh, thrown around here. So it's tough. Last question: If this does take off and there's more and more, do you think there'll be a, ever a moment where you are more val- you'll make more money as a college as student. a college student oh. than as a pro? I think you make. I think it will be true for like field events and certain other events. I think there will be certain, because not all events are like promoted equally in the non-collegiate world that like a triple jumper in college win national titles and yeah. NCAA titles and be part of like an NCAA title team. Whereas once you're alone, then it's like all the attention goes to the men's hundred, the the mile, yeah. and the distance, you know. Well, this is the thing we talked about before, too, because then it's, all right, what value do you have to the brand, right? Are you a triple jumper, a shot putter, or a discus with 400,000 social media followers? That's a little bit different, right? Yeah. Than, than someone who's just your garden variety track and field athlete yeah. on on campus. So, yeah, that's an interesting question, too, and one I think we bandied that one about last time as well, too. I just don't. I think that again, the big the the big numbers are going to appeal or are going to apply to like the Bryce Youngs of the world, right? Or or the track and field superstars, like if Grant Holloway was still in in college, yeah. right? Or Caitlin Tui, right? And then there's going to be money that goes to other people as well too, but primarily, I think companies in the long term they're going to invest where they see value. And the value is, is this person going to continue on with us after college? Or do they have so much influence as a college athlete that right now we can make money off this? We can, we can raise our awareness. I think if someone's going to get enough money to stay in college, um, I think they either need to be top, 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 top tier, like we're talking about, or they need to have enough social media followers that some like obscure brand that you've never heard of decides to give NIL deals to five college athletes and just throw crazy money at them throughout the country. And one of them happens to be a track and field athlete because that person has a lot of Instagram followers or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. like some company that nobody's ever heard of and they want to make this big splash and then they throw a bunch of money out there. Not a traditional, oh, I'm going to like, I'm going to be a Bank of America spokesperson <laughs> as, as the NCAA champion in the foreign hurdles. I just don't see that happen. All right, we'll do a quick math problem. Yeah. Okay. What is 402 minus 305? 97. Do you know what 97 also is? Oh, that was a really long way to get to the news. That was not <laughs> worth it at all. Soft Powell announces <laughs> retirement. Uh, that was fun. That was great. That was a fun That's little great. math joke. Got to reset that one. Uh, so you know, that one I can put that in the clip? No, that one does not go in there because that was okay. completely... Uh, well, if people are listening to this clip now, they're going to be like, what didn't 
you put in a clip and people are going to want to know. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm going to reset it and just say Asafa Powell, Jamaican sprint legend, announces retirement. There was yeah. something before this moment that uh, was funny. He's famous. Breaking the world record a couple occasions. Yes. And broke 10 seconds in the 100 97 times throughout his career. 97 times throughout his career. It's a lot. The last time came in 2016. He's been competing the last few years, but eventually uh, called it a career. He was trying to get to three more, obviously, I'm assuming. I mean, I think everybody's trying to get, get to 100. Right? Yeah. 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 Because then 100 under one, uh, under 10 0 is just like very s symmetrical. And yeah. But uh, hell of a career, right? I mean, he was what? Just turned 40? Yeah. Celebrate his 40th birthday. Now he's retiring. Um, what has been, what would you, obviously, when you think of Jamaica sprinting, Usain Bolt's going to be the guy. But yeah. like, if Usain Bolt didn't exist, like, Asafa Powell would be like the GOAT of Jamaica sprinting. On the men's side? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the big thing with him was he's only got two individual medals, right? Had this really long career, very successful for season after season after consistent. season. He was Mr. Consistent. He's consistent, but then when he went to the championships, you know, he only came away with, with two medals um, in individual events, was part of um, some really great relays. Again, ran some really fast times, was a model of consistency. It's got to be tough, though, to be the guy before the guy, especially when the guy... He's not just any guy, but he's the, the guy. guy. And that's what it was with Powell and Bolt, right? Like, it be, I mean, Powell was the star attraction. I still remember going to the Prefontaine Classic one year. It was all about Gatlin versus Powell in the 100. So what did they do? They put him in two separate races and made everybody angry. But that was back when that was the matchup people wanted to see. Then um, 2009 rolls or 2008 rolls around. Everything changes with Usain Bolt. But Powell kept on chugging along. I mean, yeah. he had he had eight more seasons there where he was again churning out sub ten second clockings. Had eight more seasons where he was making finals and in the mix. He just never had that that championship moment. He had yeah. a world record moment, but he never had a championship moment, which is something that you thought, okay, m maybe this will be the year. This will be the year. This will be the year, and, and it didn't happen. You contrast that with Bolt, who obviously was just better, but Bolt, what he's known for was delivering the championship yeah. moment. Almost to a point where it became predictable. And even when Bolt's regular seasons didn't look like anything, everybody would say, well, just wait for the championship, wait for the championship. And he did it every single time. So, um, again, though, Powell, I mean, to go, to, go sub, <laughs> to go sub 10 97 times speaks to your talent, your ability to stay healthy, just your overall like, professionalism. It, it, it's impressive when you add it up. Yeah, when you add it up, it's 97. Yeah. 97 it's 402 minus 305 what would be the equivalent of running sub 10 as a podcaster is that like i'm glad you were able to make this about you is it's that like a certain number of downloads we get on an episode no i don't, I don't it's the quality it's quality, quality. It's not, okay so it's like having a how many sub 10 performances have i've had we've done 500 you know what you should do and 40 some podcasts how many sub I think it's 10? top 100 on the charts top 100 top charts. 100. How many sub ten performances have I given to my to, to this podcast? Oh, we're still searching. Well, I haven't got one. I got at least one. I'm not gonna look at the um, World Athletics tables. I'm just gonna go to all time list. So, let's see. Ten seconds. One thousand one hundred fifty. There's been one thousand one hundred fifty five sub ten. This is when legal performances. Like, just put that into the. Put That's that in, eight point four percent. He's eight point four percent list of of history is a Safa Pal. Yeah, but I'm he's eight point four percent of track history. That's crazy. Yeah, but I'm looking at like the mile, right? So if you go down to one thousand one hundred and fifty, I mean, I guess it's a little different, but that's I mean, it's like three thirty three. Break, imagine breaking three thirty three ninety seven times in a career. What is it in the mile? Well, probably about three fifty. I knew the mile because I don't run the mile as much. You want the eight hundred? I'll give you the eight hundred. Yeah, give me the eight hundred. So the eight hundred. Uh, it's about 140, 144 low. I mean, just to compete. That so, many times. So 97 is a lot, man. Yeah. Like, if you just say, all right, a long career, 10 years, right? You're having to do that 10 times a year? Yeah. I mean, you can't miss that often. Can't miss. 
really. So I'm trying to figure I out. I feel like I've had like at least like 15 sub 10 p- performance podcasts. You think so? Yeah, for sure. At least 15. So I'm like I'm getting up there. Right. Eventually, you know, 15 years from now, I'll be in the Safa Pal territory. The po- I'll be the, po- the Safa Pal of podcasters. 97. I mean, here. so here's his 2000. This is 2006. This isn't all of his times. This is just his sub 10s. Uh, nine is win legal sub tens. 995, 996, 998, 977, 985, 985, 986, 991, 977, 999, 986, 989. That's in a non-championship and, and, and year. 2006 too. I was graduating high school then. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not, there's not even a championship at stake. And that's what he did. I still can't believe he's 8.4% of all sub tens ever run. Yeah. That's impressive. I mean, Again, some of these longevity stats are, are, are pretty crazy with him. What's more impressive, Asafa Powell's 97 sub, one, sub 10s or Nick Will's like, consecutive years of breaking four? Oh, Powell. 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 I mean, we just said this is if you rough estimate, but 333 and 1,500, yeah. it's, just, it's different. I know people love the round numbers, but sub, sub 10 is not the same as breaking four. Right, sub ten. You're basically saying, sub ten. You're running a time that is good enough to qualify for the world championship final, right? Yeah, give or take. Yeah, and he's doing that ninety-seven times. Yeah, well, he did it for over the span of twelve years, so he's doing that a little bit less than ten times a year. You know how like they had like Mister Three Thousand? Yeah, it was like for Three Thousand Hit Club. Should we call him like Mister Ninety Seven? I mean, I think that's his most, see, not, so most times you'd look at times, right? But his time got broken. Yeah. Or you'd look at medals, but his championship record isn't as good. For him, like, this is his stat, right? He's Mr. 97. Yeah, that's, that's like what he's known for. Again, I think most people would trade that for medals or they would trade it for world record that would still stand. But still, that's a staggering number. Not only is he Mr. 97. He's run nine point seven one two three four five six seven eight times. Yeah, I mean even that's pretty crazy. <laughs> you think about it. Well, all right. Salute to retirement. Yeah, happy trails. Um, what else did you want to talk about? So did you see this news about Kenya? I did. The headline in the BBC says Kenyan doping. World Athletics urged not to ban country despite doping cases. It basically amounts to uh, an official with Kenya, a cabinet, secret- a cabinet secretary, saying, don't ban us, Lord Co. That's, that's basically it. And then it outlines some details. The quote that stuck out to me, we will target and deal decisively with the criminals and their syndicates. We must work together to eradicate doping and cheating from athletics and sports in general. Um, and he said, we can't let our nation be banned because of some greedy, unethical individuals. So basically, here's the difference. And people want to always say, what's the difference between this and, and, and Russia? And he, the, the gentleman, um, Namwamba, Ababu Namwamba, is outlining it there. He's, he's making it about an individual choice as opposed to a countrywide system, which is what made Russia different. Because when it came to Russia and them getting banned, a lot of it was because you couldn't even trust any tests were taking place in the country because of the levels of corruption with the anti-doping process that were taking place. He's saying, hey, look, we have a lot of athletes in here who are testing positive, but those are all individual choices. So don't ban us all collectively. The article does say Kenya is among seven countries deemed category A, the highest doping risk by the AIU. Um, So that means they need three tests in 10 months to be able to compete at a major which we've seen people not be able to compete. Remember, we had a 1,500-meter runner on the men's side not be able to compete for Kenya because he wasn't in the pool long enough, which I think, to be honest, that's a fair rule. That's a fine rule. Like, I'm, I'm good with it. And if you want to have increased and more rigorous testing processes for countries that have had more positive tests, then that's fine. I don't think we're getting we're anywhere close to a countrywide ban here. Do you? No, maybe this is just like preemptively, prevent preemptively. But there could be stuff going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. Yeah, but don't that's ban, they, banning the whole country is just totally different. But yeah, it does seem like what Russia did is a lot different from what Kenya or what what Kenyan athletes are doing versus what the Russian athletes are doing. Yeah, um, unless though there is some connection that we don't know about. I'm not 
there's absolutely zero proof of this of Kenya athletics being directly connected to it, but yeah, if that's the case, then that would be a situation. That's different. You, I think you, ban, but we haven't seen yeah. that yet. I think the process is is spelled out like this: you ban individuals when you think individuals or their coaches are the ones responsible. You start banning countries and federations when they're covering up, when they're making it so that you can't even have any faith in any test that's being take, given in their in their country. Um, I mean, in many ways, Kenya's best defense is, hey, look, look at all these positive tests. It shows that we're testing, right? We're willing to, to bust people. Now, yeah. there's other people who would say, well, yeah, but there's a, this is the tip of the iceberg. There's going to be more and more stuff out there that 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 isn't even getting caught. But I just I don't think we're anywhere close to this point at all. Um, again, I just I think that's a totally level up when you talk about a systemic doping program versus what's going on right now in Kenya. And it's not good, right? It's not good either way. No one's arguing. It's not that, good, Bob. No, not, not good. Not good. That's you know from uh, Madman. Um, thank you for doing that. Um, but yeah, no one's arguing. It's like, oh, yep, they are. There's no responsibility to be had here. I'm just saying it's an extraordinary measure to ban a federation. And when when does that happen? That happens when you start drilling holes through the wall and passing through, vi- you know, passing yeah. vials through and, and, and just basically making a mockery of the entire process. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to read email? Well, before we read the email, do you know what I did this past weekend? Uh, no. I started making some rankings. Yeah. NCA track indoor rankings. Started dabbling a little bit with U.S. track pro rankings for yeah. 2023. And throughout all this process, I was looking at who has the world standard? I was like into that. I was like, who has the 2023 world standard? I was wondering. I know you were wondering. Yeah. Now, obviously, we know like Grant Fisher has the 5K standard. We're in 1246 in September. Obviously, it's 2633 in March. It's still relevant. Whatever. But there's only one man who has the 1500 standard. And there's only one man who is in the world rankings quota for the 800. So no one has a standard in the 800 for men. In the, but one U.S. man is in the world rankings quota. In the men's 800. Can you name him? Yard Nagus is the one with the 1500 standard because we're at 333 in September. But one, would, hold on. There's, so there's one person. One US man is currently ranked high enough in the world rankings that if he were to finish top three, he would be selected. Now, these rankings will change over time because people will run. I'm trying to th- as of right now, who is the highest ranked US athlete? I'm trying to think about NACAC, right? Because is it someone who did NACAC, won NACAC? You know what? I'm going big. Derek Holdsworth. No. Ah. You're, you're, in the right, you're in the right like mindset. I picked him for a sleeper last year. You're in the right uh, mindset. Think, think even bolder. Eric Sawinski. Yeah. Heck yes. <laughs> yes, let's go, Eric. Another year. Another year. Let's what, do it. You're, what, you're like 12 for him? Uh, go for it, man. No. So well, speaking of longevity, guys yeah. who have been crushing it for year after year after year, I don't know how many 144s he's run, but his number is pretty high. Yeah. He's going to be the Mr. 97 of the 800. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Good stat. All right. That was worth it. See? Got to get a little tighter some, on the wind up Sometimes there. I bring some. See, that was that a sub-10 performance right there? Is there a sub-10 No, you took too long. Stat? That had like, you had 10, 20 meters of good running, but, but it was prefaced by so a bunch was, of crap. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a 10 You got to get to the point sometimes. All right, uh, I'm going to check in the chat, and then we can read some uh, emails. How about that? Go for it. Uh, Patrick said, would a country be eligible for suspension if War Athletics considers the nation to be grossly negligent, uh, similar to the lack of institutional control, control sanction you see in the NCAA? Yeah, so I don't know specifically how they would rule on that, but here's the thing. Doing nothing is bad, but actively sabotaging the process is worse, right? So if you're a country and you're not doing anything about anti-doping, should you, should you get sanctions? I mean, probably in the world we live in right now. But again, that is not as bad as actively sabotaging the process, which is what the evidence against Russia pointed to. Right? So there's degrees to it. There's, are you really on top of your game and catching people who are cheating? Great. Then it's, are you not doing anything, but then do people are getting caught because other people are testing? That's not very good. You should be testing, but whatever. I know. Are you totally turning a blind eye to it and not testing at all? Okay, that's bad. And then are you 
just throwing the whole process out the window. Yeah, that's where we're at. Um, Matthew says, you're drunk, better be getting good. One month left. I think he's referring to your dunk. Yes, uh, I have been actually thinking about that. It's getting close. The deadline's coming soon. But here's my situation. The deadline I wanted to be December 31st, end of the year. But I may want to like, is it okay if I do it? Because I kind of want to do it in Austin. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be home. I thought you were going to do it on a wood floor and everything like that. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I'm going to, well, I haven't done another attempt since the Nerf ball dunk. Which was a great performance, <laughs> the Nerf ball dunk. You spoke about it like it's a historical event, like it's Yorktown or something. I mean, the Nerf. The Nerf everyone ball remembers dunk. where they were. When I remember your genuine reaction when you saw the Nerf ball. Dunk, I was happy for you. You were like, "Holy shit!" That might have been a '97 performance. Yeah, you right were there. like, "This isn't this." He actually is doing it. Um, dunk's going well. I'm still training. I mean, the 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 turkey trot definitely it set you back. Set it was me too back much a bit. Distance too running. Too much distance running for me because I'm. You got to run in. one in Troy, New York. You yeah, dunked on I'm that all guy. in on. Biking and lifting and jumping. Those are the three things. Um, so, dunk's coming along, though. We'll do... I might do one more pre-test in, like, a week or two. And then go all in on December 31st. My birthday's December 30th, so maybe I'll just do it on my birthday. But you're not going to be in Austin. And you... What... Who cares if it's in Austin, though? Like, what are we... I don't know. The people. I don't know. They're, I kind of want to do... The people are on I the internet. Wa- I kind of want to do the dunks on, on the, the same inter- hoop where I like did the first attempt. You can do additional dunks there, but I think you should get a hardwood floor. I will say this, though. Go to your high school There gym. was a tweet. There was a tweet. And it made me feel kind of like... Bad? Yeah. Well, I don't know. What so, was the tweet? Colt. You sure you want to bring this up? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I want to bring it up. This guy's a friend of mine. Oh. Former professional runner. I'm going to find the video. Okay, so Colt, I'm putting it in the chat. I'm uh, not in the chat, in the doc now. So, former Oregon Duck, Myler, ran professionally for a few years, lives in New York, I believe. Daniel Wynn, in jeans and shoes, random shoes, at the park, dunks a basketball. And this made you feel... I was like, if Daniel Wynn can do it, I better be able to. Is he left handed? I, be- I better be. I better be able to do this. He's like an elite athlete, though. Like you forget. Okay, no, but he's like retired. He's still an elite athlete. But he's a, a distance. He's not. A, he's not a basketball player. He's a distance runner. I know. What's he's the, not athletic. He's not. He clearly he's, is he's athletic. athletic. He's a, he clearly is athletic. He's a lean miler. He like, just dunked on. How tall is he? He is taller than me. So he is. Oh, he is? He's like okay. six four, I think, or six five. But is that I a full size basket? I can't tell. That's a yeah. I'm, I'm assuming it's a regular size. Colt out here fact checking. But I saw Daniel Wynn do this, and I was like, man, if Wynn can do it, did you I'm, send him a message? I haven't. But I saw that. Is it because he's doing it in jeans? That's what bothers you. Yeah, he's doing you. it in jeans, yeah. and it seems very like he just walked up and did it. And that, how old is he though? He's younger. Right? He's like a few years younger than me. Okay. But like, so what does this have to do with you deciding whether or not you want to dunk in Austin? No, that's nothing to do with that. It just it's like this motivation. Like if I fail at this, and Daniel Wynn just did it in like a heartbeat. I'm going to feel like a little... you got to not compare yourself to other people. There's a lot of things That's true. that you try really hard to do that other people can do very easily. Daniel and I go way back. He was... Uh, he was he, he hosted me in Belgium when uh, I was there covering track meets in Europe. I slept on his floor. It was actually a funny story. Do you really go way back? Would he know you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, we, hung, we, 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 we Okay. I don't know. We talked, we talked at Wild Duck uh, during Worlds. You were oh. there. I really was... talked to him in front of you. Okay. Uh, Wait, I was sitting there talking to two dunkers. I didn't even know. Yeah, I know, right? You didn't <laughs> even know. No, but uh, it's actually funny because it's actually a funny story. So I went to Europe twice. First time I was staying uh, with a bunch of track guys and there was an extra bed and they're like, yeah, you can stay. Great time. Whatever. Year later, Daniel Wynn and Ford Palmer, they were like, I reached out to them. I was like, hey, I, you guys are going to be there. Can I crash at your place? And they're like, yeah, for sure. It was fine last year. You can do it again this year. Mm-hmm. I show up, turns out their place was a different place, and it only had two beds, mm. not an extra bed. There was no place for me to sleep, gotcha. so I slept on the floor for three nights with no pillow and no blanket. I used my backpack as a pillow, <laughs> and I slept on a hardwood floor for three nights, and it was, it was great. It was good times. And he's your friend? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to make- Best guy I've ever met. I'm there filming the runners. They're Just there done. actually have to- Run I'm, I'm just track kidding. races and workouts. So I'm not going to sleep on a hardwood floor. He's got some good tweets. Yeah. Oh, Daniel's great. He's a great follow. Follow Daniel Wynn. 
Good right. follow. Uh, will Gordon get banned if he dopes for the dunk? Uh, David thinks you should do it at halftime of a John Hopkins game. That would be fun. I think you should do a try. Does Disneyland have a court? Because maybe you can sort of avenge your, your Imagineer debacle. <laughs> yeah, just dunk on an Mickey? Imagineer uh, or Mickey. Gordon, get banned with no dunk, someone said. Um, on the Caitlin Tui deal, Caitlin Tui fan says, Caitlin Tui's NIL deal was handled by the Adidas team that handles pro athlete contracts and not the team that manages college NIL deals, which makes sense because... Yeah, it definitely feels like a... Let's get her now, and then we have a better spot, seat at the table when she does ultimately go yeah, pro. Yeah. It's definitely get a seat at the table. Like, they literally got, not only do they have a seat, they, like, got, like, a bench that's, like, cemented to the ground <laughs> with, like, a coffee maker and, like, a flat screen TV. Like, they have a recliner at the table. Why would you want a bench cemented to the ground? Because it's not moving. Because oh, a stool okay. can just throw away. Like, stool, I'm gotcha, sorry, Puma, yeah. stool, just gone. Yeah, it's okay. like, Puma's not getting, <laughs> you're not getting her. It's cool. Nike's always going to have a chair. It's like that chair that's like... Rolls in and rolls yeah, out. Yeah, rolls in. It's like, all right, we can't say no to that chair. But now the Adidas and the New Balance, the New Balance chair is like, damn, that Adidas chair is much more firm in Caitlin Tui's court than my chair I got at Target. <laughs> okay. Got it. Uh, it's all about having the right chair. And right now, they basically... Is this an ad for a chair company? No, is that what this was? Basically, Adidas called up Exhibit, and they pimped the chair out. Oh, they, like, you know, pimp my ride. They, yeah, like, yeah, pimp yeah. my chair at the table for Caitlin Tui's in- inevitable pro deal. Like, they got they're getting an extractor. Xbox. They got everything. <sighs> exhibit, man. That's, that's a good a, show. That's a reference. Yeah, ride. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's what this deal is. It's giving them the ultimate chair at the table. Doesn't mean it's guaranteed, though. Patrick says it'd be a real shame if Gordon went full Tom Segura. Uh, people have been telling me that. I've been getting a couple of tweets. Was how did he hurt himself? Remind me again. <laughs> he tried. To, he tried to dunk a basketball oh, or really? lay up a basketball. I think he tried to dunk. I don't know. I don't he, like a shorter hoop, and he slipped and fell, and he broke his arm like bad, bad. Okay. Well, no, but it was, it was like, his knee too, and his knee it was really bad. Oof. It was like dangerously bad. And also funny. We don't want that. I already, I already did the break. I already got the fall. I already broke my. You own. did it when you're riding a bike. Yeah. I don't so think I've you're gonna do that. that. I mean, you're more athletic than he is. Yes. Right? Yes. So it's like Daniel Wynn, Gordon, and Thompson. then Top Skirt. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm in the middle. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Let me read some of these emails here. Um, about the. Uh, this is about the tiebreaker. Okay. This is Tim in Virginia. I've been turning some ideas around in my head concerning meat scoring since the NCAA cross country meet and thought you both might uh, be able to kick them around as well. Okay. I have a nine year old that I've been watching running events with over the last couple of years. And when I explained cross country scoring to him the other day, he said, it's weird that in track you want more points, but in cross country you want fewer points. Great use of fewer instead of less by his nine year old, by the way, nailed that one. <laughs> I told him that he's right. It is weird. So it got me thinking, could a system of qualifying and scoring in, um, Cross country national meet be able to, sorry, at the XC national meet be made to resemble track and field. Uh, here's what I came up with. Any feedback you have is appreciated. So this isn't about the tiebreaker, but uh, take the top 32 athletes. This is a very Gordon topic. Okay. Top 32 athletes at the regional meet, no limit on entries per team, no team qualifying. At the national meet, Ooh. have a descending point system like in track. First place gets 256 points. It's a lot of points. <laughs> How many did you score today? 256. Second place, 255. Every runner gets points for their team. So Florida would get 255 points in the women's race and would be included in the team results. Mm. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. This is very track-like. You track, win yeah. the meet with one person. Yeah. Uh, the team with the most points overall wins next is second. You could have a team with four runners beat a team with seven runners depending on placing. Optional. Make XC Nationals a long, short format like the World Cross Country Championship so there's a bit more parity similar to track. I like long short. Any guy like have strategy of who you can put in the short course and the yeah. long course. I do like that. Um, I do know that. I, I first of all, I like this idea. I mean, it would be kind of. It would be fun. It it does highlight some issues with track. Yeah. Scoring, which we've talked about for years. Yeah. Lincoln brought it up one time. Got yelled at at a press conference. <laughs> I remember that. Do your research. Shout out Lincoln. Um, I mean, I remember like when Lowry Lelang almost could win for Arizona when he was just doing a triple, for and they had like a decathlete. Uh, but I don't know. I would like. I would like it. I know it would piss people off because track coaches and track people in, in general are just very like hate change and they're like this is how we do it. How dare you ruin the sanctity of five man scoring system? Yeah. Right? But I mean, 
I wonder what so I remember having this thought when so throwback, not that much throwback. Casey Klinger and the American Fork high school team. Yep. A few years ago. They had three of the best runners in the country. And when they went to NXN, they put three in like the top eight mm. or something like that. Or three yeah. in the top five. I don't know. They went like one, two, three. I don't know. It's ridiculous. But because they're one, two, three, there was like basically they didn't win because Because their four and five was so far back. No, it's not because their four and five are so far back. It was more that the the people that they were beating weren't I don't know how to explain this. They were individual qualifiers yeah. and not individual qualifiers. Team qualifiers. So like they beat someone by like two minutes, but it only got two more points to that right, person. Right, right. And yeah. it's just like really or two less points, even though you beat them by two minutes, because yeah. they, there's just a different world. And so I always thought that was kind of weird how like you could have three runners who are two minutes better than everyone else, and you're gonna still lose because yeah. it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile, one place is one place. So you like a time. So I think it should be time. time. Yeah. I like Cross country the way it is, like the scoring, with one exception, which I've the time spoken breaker. about. But I like that there's a place for more true competition, and I like there's a place for where the time doesn't matter as much. Like I, I kind of like that, that it's a unique thing about cross country, because as much as people say track is a team sport, track is a team sport, the relays are team sports. Everything else is just a series of individuals that add up points. Like They don't train together. I like that cross country feels more like a legitimate team uh, sport and there's team tactics. What about this? Involved. As Let's well, make too. this the ultimate tiebreaker. Oklahoma State and NAU. They find out that they're tied. Mm-hmm. They get an, uh, 45 minutes of recovery. They go again. They go again, but it's a relay. <clears throat> they get to choose the length of everyone's leg, but all seven runners need to be part of the leg. Mm-hmm. And like you have one runner run one k, the first runner run a mile. So they run another ten k. They all have to run it, but they all run one seventh of a ten k. Or get this, whoever had the best six runner. <laughs> but wouldn't that be cool to it. see like a relay in like cross country, like kind of like Ekaden, Ekaden mm. t- style, where like all right, I'm gonna run the mile, then I'm gonna give it to someone who's gonna run a two k, and then someone's gonna hand it off, and now you're watching just like everyone's like, holy crap, it's coming down to the. We get a we get a tiebreaker race off. Yeah. And then everyone, all the other teams are like excited to watch Oklahoma State and NAU with tired legs go one on you know. Yeah. You're like, ooh, oh, like a put Nico Young lead off, Drew Bosley anchor, what's yeah. going on? It'll be hilarious. Yeah, it's just you're never get, you want overtime, right? I want overtime, yeah. But they don't it doesn't really work that way. There should be overtime in track and field. That's one thing that sucks about our sport, is there are zero overtime. Well, there's very we few have ties. Ju- we have jump offs. We do get jump offs in high jump and pole vault. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes they share the gold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was awful. I did. That was awfully awesome. No. That was great. No, you, no, no, no. The, the, they didn't have the dog in them. The dog in them, we say, I'm <laughs> They not, both got a gold. That I'm was not awesome. sharing my gold with nobody. Why risk it? Get the gold. No, no. But if we could find a way to throw overtime into our sport, I think that would be awesome. That's yeah. something I'm going to think about more. I'm going to come up with... My overtime ideas for every event. Well, that oh, for every event, I think it's different. But there's not. But you're all like, how you do, how often are you tying in the hundred? So this is what you do: you get rid of the one thousandth, one hundredth decimal, and make it all to the tenth. Oh, so there's more just, ties. Just tons of ties, <laughs> and just, then we have a lot of overtime. And in in like the long jump, get rid of like centimeters. Just like you jump seven meters, it's a tie. Yeah, it doesn't it's matter tie. if it's 790 it's or 715. It's yeah. You just want a bunch of people going over. No, no. You, no, you, no, you just get rid of the, the centimeter. You go to a decimeter or to, to tenth. Put like 7.1 or 7.2. I think we should have a six runner in cross country. I think it's real safe. I think like overtime right in there. track and field would be must-see TV. I mean, you could just run a four-by-four four again, couldn't you? But then if both teams don't have a – like it wouldn't actually work at the national meet. It could work. On the team side. Are you, it, about, are you talking about team score being tied or individual events being tied? Uh, either or. Because what, what do you do the year Georgia had all field event athletes and Oregon had all running event athletes, right? For the women, no, they tied? Everyone gets to bring or their tie. They didn't tie, but they were Everyone fun. gets to bring their tiebreaker runner. Oh, okay. I see. Who doesn't compete. And then what do they run? Their job is to be prepared for the tiebreaker. And you have you have one distance guy, one sprint guy, and one whatever. And then you do a raffle. And you're like, all right, today this tiebreaker is three thousand meter steeplechase. And you're like, all right, you're up. 
Uh, David brings up a good point. Yes, because the biggest problem with track meets is they don't last long enough. <laughs> Yeah, how how many days is added to yeah. the meet if we do Gordon, this for hey, every... Gordon is a master at Cricket's making... great. People love cricket, so... People love cricket. They can love overtime and track. And he field. either wants to make things way, way shorter or way, way longer. Those are the two uh, options. Uh, on the tiebreaker, here we go. We got another one. This is from Tim. I was on the side of the sixth man until I considered a scenario. Okay. What's the scenario? What about the team that doesn't have or doesn't finish six runners? You cannot go to the sixth man if he does not exist. Are they to be penalized in a tie even though the, they met the requirements to score a full team? Hate to side with Gordon here, but I now like the rules as they stand. Ah, I love it when they say hate to side with Gordon. That's the best words I've ever heard. The reluctant hate to side agree with, you, with Gordon. But you are right. Here's what happens. You want to know what you have? What, what you should do? What? Tough luck. You didn't win the tiebreaker then. But that's what happens in okay. tiebreakers. Hold on. What happens? What happens? It's not perfect. If both teams' six runners don't exist, how do you tie it then? You go to the seventh runner. What if, what if both teams only finish with five? If, who, who wins the tiebreaker? If both teams only have five runners finish. I guess I'd need to write that into the rule book. Yeah. Uh, total well, time. To- oh, total time? Total time. What if that's? I would say yeah. Just what if that's? The, what if that is equal? Then you you draw straws. Did you know you would t- rather draw straws than use the head to head. It's basically it's it's just as stupid. Did you know that one of the tiebreakers for the World Cup is fewest yellow cards yeah. accumulated? So that's random, right? There's a chance we could have lost that on Wales if we would have lost to England and Wales would have beat you know. Yeah, but, but my point is, the longer you go, it gets more and more random, and that's okay. Right, penalty kicks to aside soccer creates some unlikely outcomes, and it's sort of a random way to end the game. But you have to end the game at some point. That's what they've they've ruled. So no, we you can't. Can just, we can't do your system. We can't run another ten k. It's not going to happen. So you need to break the tie somehow. Can't. We're not going to. They're not going to do that. Why not? They race three times as is. <laughs> you think they're going to run another ten k? It'll be fun, man. No. Do you, they, if soccer players can play another thirty minutes of running. Why right, can't but, cross country runners run another 10K? But, but then they eventually end it. They eventually end it with the PKs, which I don't think anybody likes PKs, but it's just. Well, PKs go on forever. It's sad reality. PKs technically don't have an end either. Right, right, right. But they're not running, and it produces a kind of un, like a random outcome. Uh, Bill says Gordon Diamond League already won't let them run 5,000 meters in a lot of meets. Uh, David says Cricket's most popular matches have gone from five days to a few hours. So oh. they're, they're shrinking. They're, 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 uh, baseball's doing the same thing. Um, they're putting a shot clock on the two mount and stuff. Yeah. All right. I think that's it. You got anything else? Cole, you got anything? I want overtime in track and field. You got invited to a, a event here in Austin. I did? Well, I mean, we both did, but okay. I'm not going to go. So you can go. <laughs> I got both. I got two kids by myself this week. I got I'm things like, to I'm do. Like, you know about the things I'm doing this week. Chat. Does Gordon have anything to do? No, I do. Does that we, look we, like a man? No, we can't talk about it. What's publicly, the time list? What is but this? I got things going on. The longest on this test week. cricket match this is ever. The last longest. Week. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can read it, Colt. Nine days. Nine days over 180 overs bold. I think that's like innings in cricket. Yeah. You know what the thing is? That's shorter than how long World Championships was. <laughs> the World Champs was 10 days. Long. I know, but imagine if that was one race at World Championships. How long was that uh, John Isner? Oh, that was fun. The, the, I remember watching match. that. Uh, oh, that was a great. How the long Wimbledon? Back? Yeah, that was the fifth set. 70 to 68 Yeah, in great. the final set. 11 hours and five That's minutes. That's what I'm saying. We need overtime in track and field. We need to find a way to add it. That would be hilarious. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. There it is. Yeah, 70 to 68. That's crazy. I remember that, 2010. 11 hours. All right. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe. Yeah. Uh, we're back Wednesday. Uh, might be a little bit of a special episode on Wednesday. Might be. It's going to be. We're still also, w- BU5K on got Friday. Got the entries. Is it Friday or Saturday? See, I'm not sure. It's this weekend. We'll preview that. There's also a cross country race in Austin this weekend oh, and yeah. Valencia Marathon this weekend, too. Track never ends. There's a lot to talk about. Then it's the off season. After that, once we have one more cross country race, <laughs> an indoor meet 
and, and a Mar- marathon that's might as well be a major marathon then the season's over for three or four weeks and then track's back baby yeah and then track is is back um all right thanks to colt for producing thanks to everybody watching again you can subscribe to the flow track podcast youtube page or on apple Podcasts and spotify we will talk to you guys on wednesday have a good one